Look at them ribs. Look at that color. Look at that sauce. Let's make this. Hey guys, welcome back to another cook video. On today's video, we are gonna be going back to cooking some ribs. The last time I made like a traditional central Texas style spare rib video was about a while ago. And there are a couple things that I felt like I missed in that last one that I wanted to add to this one. So there might be a couple steps that you have probably seen in other videos and you know, kind of like a lot of my videos, I wanna give you the why to, you know, certain steps are taken. So without talking about too much, let's get started. These are the St. Louis cut uh, from Costco that you probably have seen a bunch. Even though it doesn't have that full like breastbone that you would normally see like on top, uh, on top here, there are still rib tips attached to it. Normally when I'm thinking St. Louis style ribs is just the bone and having the rib tips taken off of it. Uh, so I think this is a kind of a nice medium. Okay, let's get into trimming of these ribs. And on the back right here, we got lucky. There's no skirt on this backside, so which is great. Uh, and then if I'm looking on the back right here, if there's any hunks of fat, uh, this one's actually looking pretty clean. Uh, there is this little chunk of fat right here so purpose of this video i will cut that off and then again the conversation of the membrane whether or not you have to take it off i haven't taken off a membrane off ribs in years i haven't done it for baby backs i don't do it for beef ribs i don't do it for for spare ribs just don't do it so as i look at this rack of rib right here this bone on the end i'm sure you guys have seen ribs like this all the time where this rib right here is gonna it's gonna fall out and later when we go to wrap it it's going to most likely puncture a hole in it so when we cut this rib though off the end I wanna get my cut to be as close to the inside of this edge rib as much as possible because I want this last rib to be meaty. Right there, you can see that the bone is right there. So all that meat that would be in between it gives us a really, really nice meaty edge rib right there. Next, I'm gonna feel for this last rib on this side because this part is really lean. Yeah, and I'm gonna find this last rib over here and almost cut it off so I can ha have a nice meaty rib. And on average, I want somewhere between, you know, 10 to 13 ribs. And so on this one, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and then a small 12th one on the edge right there, which is great. Right here, we're gonna pull off some of this stuff down here if there's any excess. This meat on the top right here is a little loose. Uh, and and kind of similar to the reason why we cut off all that meat over there. I'm going to trim a little bit of it off. You can see right here, everything's pretty nicely shaped and uniform all across the board. We kind of took off a little bit on this side right here so it doesn't have a huge point with a lot of lean meat where it'll dry off. And now at this point, you can keep this on like this piece right here because that fat there's a fat layer underneath there when we render it properly this part is going to fall off when it gets to the cutting block so just to be safe and not to have an under season rib underneath and when you go to the cutting block and cut it we don't want this thing to just like flop off so we're going to do that right now all right, so I think right there, that's a perfectly trimmed rib that we're looking for. Now that we got this all trimmed up, let's get to seasoning. Always gonna season the non-presentation side first and simply just going with some kosher salt and 60 mesh black pepper. People might ask, do you need to season the backside, especially on the membrane because you know there's not really a meat on there? I would, I think it looks better when it does have a little bit of uh, seasoning, especially that pepper that makes it pop a little bit. But also you got meat over here and you know, with the rib tips and that section right there, you know, it's nice to season all sides. Because we're not gonna be rubbing this in, you wanna make sure it's nice and even all the way across. Be a little bit heavier on this side because there's more meat on it. Again, we just wanna be nice and even. And if you do have ribs that are a little bit thicker, you can definitely season up the sides, especially that, that side that has a cartilage and the rib tip. So we want to get as much flavor on those pieces as possible. That to me is a perfectly seasoned rack of ribs. And I think we're ready to throw this on the smoker. Now we are sitting at dead even at 250 according to my pit. Just because we're only doing one rack of rib, I'm just going to have it go across this way. I like placing it this way because we got the thinner side of the rib closest to the door, which is a little bit cooler. We got that part back there where we took off that little bit of meat and there's a little bit more fat on top. So I think it, it can handle a little bit more heat in that back wall. 
At some point, if I feel like it's cooking a little bit uneven or the backside is a little bit too hot, we might flip things a little bit, but let's give it a couple hours and see what it looks like before we do so. And just like my previous Central Texas style rib video, we're not gonna be spritzing this rib at all. I wanted to build as much color and dry out the surface because that's how we're gonna develop all the texture and the color that we're looking for. And we're gonna try to maintain our temperature about 250, 275 for the duration of the three hours. And kind of depending on what it looks like, how it feels like and all the different checks that I like to do at that time, we might give an extra 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an extra hour but really all this kind of depends on how well you manage your fire within the first three hours. And just to give you guys an idea what my fires look like, you got a good coal bed at the bottom, elevated a little bit, that log that's sitting on top is a little bit, has a little more moisture. The one that's going across that away, it's a little bit drier, so it's helping the one up top kind of catch a little bit more. Nothing to it guys, it doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be efficient, and has to burn clean throughout, but that's about it. Let's get started on making this barbecue sauce. Start with some ketchup, a little less than half of that amount in mustard, about the same amount of apple cider vinegar as you did ketchup, and some Worcestershire sauce. In most of my sauces, these are the four that you can kind of play around with to figure out the viscosity and the level of acidity that you want. Uh, and also a lot of your color uh, based off of this right here. And depending on what brand of ketchup, mustard, Worcestershire, and apple cider vinegar you use, it might be a little bit different in terms of the amount of vinegar and salt. So just uh, have a rough idea of your ideal taste that you would like, and then you kind of have to adjust it. Now it's time to add in our spices. We're gonna start with garlic, chili powder, some cumin, and at the end, a little bit of cayenne. The level of cayenne, that's really up to you. If you wanna make it a spicy sauce, and obviously you can put more in, you can add hot sauces to your sauce at this point also. I haven't done this before, but doing like even like a Szechuan peppercorn that's ground up really, really fine might be interesting. The way I like to look at most basic barbecue sauces is treating it as a fortified spice ketchup. So other than this, the other main ingredient to most barbecue sauces or sweet barbecue sauces is definitely some sort of sugar. And for my sauces, I personally like using brown sugar. I do like the little bit of molasses in there. I do like it picking up the sauce a little bit. But in general, I just feel like it adds a different flavor profile than just using regular uh, white sugar. But I'll say one thing with the brown sugar is sometimes when you dump it into this sauce right here that is not warmed up, uh, it can clump up and it can also thicken up the sauce a little bit too much so it doesn't become like a cohesive sauce. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the amount of brown sugar that I want and pour some warm water on top or some hot water just so it's a little bit easier to mix. You don't need a lot of water. We just want to dissolve it just so that when we throw it in, it won't clump up and we're mixing it uh, with everything else in here that's already cold. I forgot to add some black pepper, so we'll do that now. So I just tasted the sauce. I know I definitely need to add some more sugar to this. It's not quite as sweet as I would like. This is the one reason why I feel like when people make their own barbecue sauces, this is one of the things that I hate seeing because you just see how much sugar goes into a barbecue sauce. All right, so that's what our barbecue sauce is looking like. I like the consistency of it. I like the color of it. The amount of sweetness is where I want it to be. A little bit of extra cumin that I add in there. It's definitely popping now. So one quick note I wanted to add about your barbecue sauce at the end. If you forget about adding a salt at the end, if you feel like it's a little flat and you keep adding things like garlic, onion, cumin, like chili powder and things like that, your sauce becomes really, really gritty from all these other ingredients in there. But when you're not sure, you know, take out a small batch and then put a little bit of salt in there and see if you if it tastes right. If it tastes right, you just might have to add some salt to it. And if it still feels like it's really flat or all you taste is just the sugar and the ketchup and the vinegar, then, you know, obviously you can uh, think about what proportions of other savory ingredients you need to mix in there. All right, guys, so we are about three hours and 40 minutes in. Nice color all the way through. This is the part where I said we're listening for that squish test here a little bit. And when we squeeze it, oh, maybe you can hear it. Hold up, let me get to the mic. Squishy, but not all the way there yet. I wanna render a little bit more of that by the time we uh, get to wrap. We're gonna flip this. 
Now, a couple things that we're looking for. Like, this looks pretty good. Because my pit is smaller, I get a nice even color on both top and bottom. So the reason why we don't take off the membrane is because at this point in time, when we flip these ribs, now the fat that starts to drip off from underneath this membrane doesn't just drip down to the bottom. Some of it will start to pull up on top. Not a lot of it, but a little bit will. And that's gonna be another indication when we get a little bit of pooling on top that we're probably ready to now wrap these ribs. <sighs> that color on the back is a lot more, has that red tint to it. It's a lot more even, it's a lot more dark. And that is what we are looking for right there. So that is beautiful. I think because it was cooking hotter on the bottom on this pit anyway, uh, there isn't a lot, but sometimes you'll be able to, when these ribs are done and they're ready to kind of get into, go into foil, like you'll be able to tilt this in. You'll see a lot of fat just dripping, but again, like we had a lot of color on here earlier, so I'm pretty sure we just weren't gonna get that. Also, again, color on these ribs look fantastic that's beautiful i think though uh even though the color looks pretty good right now i'm gonna let this go for another 30 minutes if your ribs feel good and this is the color that you got right now man i would say we're we're in a good place to wrap and just for fun we'll bump up the temp just a little bit higher so we'll border on 275 285 uh, just until we get the texture that we want in these ribs. I said there's gonna be two things that we do that, uh, that some places do. The first thing that we did was we flipped them and now what I'm gonna do is just add a little more sauce to them. Not too thick, but we wanna put a thin layer so we can get a nice texture to it. Again, this is also gonna help develop some color to these ribs as well, so that by the time we are done and it comes out of the wrap, that we it still maintains a good color to it. In between the bones, I, I don't want to have sauce collect in here because if we do, it's gonna get really gloopy and nasty. And now what we're gonna do is have this heat go a little bit higher. So uh, kind of like briskets, I like to bring it up slowly, slowly, slowly. And then we'll also probably maintain a similar temperature um, when they're wrapped up. All right guys, so this is what the ribs look like now much better color much darker and also again a very very important with that sauce that's not there's no pools of like gloopy sauce in between the rib bones because we kind of rake them out as we were saucing them when you want to have extra color on your ribs you got to get them dark 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 because when you put them in foil they're going to lighten up just a bit so these ribs right now are definitely ready to wrap so we're going to get to that right now you guys can see all that extra work about flipping ribs, saucing them properly, doing all that. Now it looks amazing. So we are gonna put the ribs face down. You could put apple cider vinegar down here as well with the sauce, but honestly, I'm just too lazy, so I'm not going to. And the more liquid you put down here, the more likely you'll have some, uh, you know, fading colors. Oh, nice and tight like that. But anytime you get to a point when your your ribs are wrapped and you have to cook them more than an hour, you wrap them too early. When that happens, uh, you just have to kind of keep in mind that you probably have to cook at a higher temp, or maybe you sauce too early, you flip too early, all those kind of things. So I would say 30 to 45 minutes or anytime less than an hour is really that time that you're looking for. And if they have to go on a little bit longer, the right texture, the color might fade. So there's a lot of factors that kind of happen and cooking it a little bit too long towards the end. So uh, yeah, make sure you kind of do everything right so that at this point, you know, you only have to do it maximum that amount of time. And if you have thinner ribs, you might not even have to do it at all. Okay, so we got these ribs pulled off now. Uh, they've been on for about I would say between 40 to 45 minutes or so, and they're nice and pliable. You can see that bend in them. But I'm not gonna open these right now because I know that they're finished and I don't wanna lose any of the steam uh, as it rests. So I, I don't know if this is true or not, but I, I have felt like uh, ribs that I tend to open much earlier to check tend to be a little more gray and lose its color. So I don't wanna do that for these ribs. All right, let's get these ribs opened up. I 
that's it right there guys so that's the rib right there super juicy and moist great color on that outside right there beautiful let's get a taste perfect by not rib delicious you guys know how I feel about that cartilage in that rib tip right there. Okay, let's eat it. This is really juicy. Delicious. What did you marinate with? What did you like that, man? Salt, pepper, and then with the barbecue sauce. It's like a glaze. Did you make your own sauce? Yep. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. It's really good, actually. Mm, I like the pepper. I like it. It's a lot better than beef. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video of us being able to cook these ribs and also making this barbecue sauce. So if you guys haven't made your own barbecue sauce before, it's really simple to find different ratios of very simple ingredients that you probably have at home. And you just kind of have to find like, do you like it a little bit more mustardy, a little like it more vinegary, a little more sweet or spicier or however else you like it. But um, really just wanted to show you guys the basis of how to make a barbecue sauce. And with the ribs, first and foremost, you have to make sure that we can control our temperatures and maintain that. Um, but also knowing when to go to the next step in the cook. But other than that, certain things that we want over specifically in this video is the purpose of not removing your membrane, because uh, I like to use it as as a visual cue for myself to know uh, when I know I'm getting close to wrapping a rib and also just being really nitpicky about how I glaze the sauce you know on top of the ribs you know while we're still trying to build color it's all these really really small things that you kind of stack uh, as you kind of go and this is not the only way you can do it everything is small little tweaks you know that's why I feel like this one in particular is a not a hard cook to get right, but it is one that's uh, difficult if you want to please, you know, majority of people. But I do feel like this recipe and this method, if you guys try this, will be highly successful, uh, whoever you decide to cook for. That's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. If there's any tricks or tips that you felt like were helpful, leave in the comments down below so you can let other people know who watch these videos what to look for and what you think was important. But yeah, if you guys wanna support this channel, please make sure to like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next one.